Hello, I'm Scott Ritchie, and I'm going to be speaking about pressure control ventilation, specifically in regards to tidal volume delivery. Now, a lot of people unfamiliar with pressure control may not like to use pressure control because they cannot set a specific tidal volume and they do not know what the tidal volume is going to be. But this is very untrue. I can know exactly where my tidal volume is going to be based on my pressure control setting. So this short video, I'm going to be going over one mathematical model of pressure control. That is predicting my delivered tidal volume. So hang around with me for a while and I'm going to go over a quick video on how to calculate my delivered tidal volume based on my pressure control setting. A very valuable tool when using pressure control ventilation. Thank you. Okay, so we were talking about how do I predict tidal volume when using pressure control. This screen shows a pressure control simulator and we'll look at a couple things. We're going to look at the patient's compliance. We're going to look at our inspiratory pressure above PEEP and then when I scroll down I'm going to scroll down. Then we're going to look at the max tidal volume delivered. So this is based on the mathematical principles of pressure control. So one thing is, all you do is the patient's, this is going to be the patient's static compliance, not dynamic compliance because it's much different. To get the static compliance, you want to do a inspiratory hold maneuver. And you multiply that by the inspiratory pressure. So this 60 times 10, that equals 600, and that's my max tidal volume obtainable for that compliance value. So that's the max tidal volume obtainable. There are other factors like resistance, your respiratory rate, your eye time, that it might affect this max tidal volume delivery. Now let's look at this at, with the... Um, ventilator simulator also. Now this is my ventilator and we're gonna look at a couple things. So I have it set, just follow the cursor on the right portion of the screen. I'm in pressure control ventilation. I have a pressure control setting of 10 and let's go to the patient. And the patient I have now has a resistance of 10 and a compliance of 60. So this is a patient compliance of 60 if I multiply that by 10, then my max tidal volume attainable should be 600, nothing above 600. I'm going to close that out. And as you can see, here's my measured values, and it's less than 600. It's 566. And this might be due to variable reasons if we're providing enough inspiratory time for the patient to provide adequate alveolar filling. I'm going to go down to my monitoring and look at actually the compliance value here. So my compliance value here, as you can see with the cursor, it's 60 right now. Another value I want to look at is my respiratory time constant. Usually my inspiratory time constant is a little shorter than my expiratory time constant, but you notice it's 0 0.6 seconds. So I want an inspiratory time that by three, so that's 1.8 seconds. So I might not be given enough alveolar filling time. I'm gonna go under my controls. And as you can see, based on this respiratory rate of 10 and this IE ratio of one to two, I have a two second inspiratory time. So I have plenty of time for alveolar filling based on that time constant. So I should be pretty close to 600 cc's. And I'm only at 566. There could be other factors like volume loss to the circuit itself or leaks in the system. So the mathematical model is not perfect, but it's a great estimate of what max tidal volume I'm going to get. So this is the first scenario, a normal patient with pretty average compliance of 600 cc's. Now we're going to go into a different scenario. All right. Now what I did is I changed the compliance of the patient to reflect a patient with ARDS. So I decreased the compliance from 60 to 25. So this is a common compliance for a patient with ARDS. We kept the same inspiratory pressure 
of 10 centimeters water. And now what we want to look at is I'm just going to scroll down on the screen and follow my cursor. Now my max tidal volume is obtainable is only 250 cc's. So that is the same mathematical equation. It's just basically multiplying my compliance by my inspiratory pressure above PEEP. And then that gives us our max tidal volume that we can generate. We can also look at this equation and say that I'm actually, instead of 250, I want to target a tidal volume of 450. So what we know with every centimeter water of inspiratory pressure based on this compliance, so a compliance of 25, we're creating tidal volume changes of 25 centimeters of water. So if we take this into, let's say, if we want this to 450, so that's a 200 milliliter cc difference, we want to increase our pressure control value by 8 centimeters of water. Because like I said before, each change in pressure control based on this compliance of 25 is just a 25 um, fold increase. So let's go ahead and try that. So here's our compliance. I'm not changing my inspiratory pressure. I'm going to go up by 8 centimeters of water to a pressure control of 18. And then we're going to look at my tidal volume on the mathematical volume. Sorry, I went over. And now my max tidal volume that I can generate is 450. Now, like I said earlier, that we can now target tidal volumes. We can predict what the tidal volume is going to be based on looking at my compliance and using my pressure control setting. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the ventilator simulator itself. We are back to the ventilator simulator. We're in pressure control again. And I set the simulator up for, let's check the patient. I changed the compliance. It's for an ARDS patient. So the same as the mathematical model of pressure control, the compliance is 25. And based on that compliance value, I have a pressure control setting of 10 centimeters of water, just like as we started. And as you can see, a measured tidal volume of 250 milliliters. If we go to monitoring, we can see our compliance is 25 centimeters of water. Now, like the mathematical model, say I wanted to target a tidal volume of 450. So if I take this 250 into 450, that's a 200 milliliter difference. And based on the patient's measured compliance value of 25, if I divide that into 200 milliliters, I know that I'm going to have to increase my pressure control value by 8 centimeters of water to get that target tidal volume of 450 cc's. So now let's go ahead and increase my pressure control setting to 18 centimeters of water. And we're going to watch our measured value here. And we're going to start to go up. Even with pressure control, we can target a tidal volume. So we can get the benefits of pressure control ventilation and still be lung protective because we know with compliance changes what pressure control we can set to offset for these changes. Now this is going to take a few breaths. With these measured values, it's usually an average, it depends on the ventilator, about four to five breaths versus your set breath. And we're starting to come up here now. And now we're at 450. So that's the max tidal volume we can deliver based on this pressure control value and the patient's compliance. If the patient's compliance gets better, of course, we can obtain more tidal volume if we need it. So I'm going to change the scenarios again. 
and look at the mathematical model and again at the ventilator simulator. We are back to our mathematical model of pressure control ventilation. And we still have it, the compliance set up for the ARDS patient. And now let's do a scenario like if we had to decrease our pressure control level because the compliance gets better and we're not being lung protective anymore. So if we look at our compliance value, it's currently set at 25 and our pressure control level is 18 centimeters of water. And based on those calculations, that gives us a max obtainable tidal volume of 450 milliliters or cc's. Now let's say the patient is out of the acute phase of illness. They're getting better. Their lung compliance is getting better. We can predict what's going to happen with the tidal volume with these lung compliance changes. So let's say the compliance gets better to 50. Now even before looking at the max tidal volume that this can generate, we can calculate the math here. So we can calculate this 18 into 50. And that will give us a tidal volume of 900, which is going to be excessive to your standard size patient. So with every centimeter water change in my inspiratory pressure, it's going to change my tidal volume by 50 cc's. So we can look at that. So let's scroll down to our max tidal volume, and this can generate 900 cc's. So this is a good scenario, and this kind of scares a lot of people using pressure control. You're like, well, we can't guarantee a tidal volume. Um, with volume ventilation, we can be more lung protective. But it's all based on settings and limits you set alarms, thresholds to alert you during these situations. Let's go back to the compliance. Let's say I want to target about 600 cc's. So that's a 300 cc difference from 900. If we look at our compliance value of 50 cc's, we know that with each inspiratory pressure change, that's going to drop my tidal volume by 50 cc's. So if I want to drop it by 300 cc's, I need to decrease my inspiratory pressure by six centimeters of water. So let's turn this down to 12. We started at 18 here. We're going to take off six to get to 12. One, two, three, four, five, six. That gives us an inspiratory pressure of 12. And if we look at our max tidal volume, this brings us to our tidal volume of 600 cc's. Now let's do this scenario on the ventilator also, the ventilator simulator. All right, we have our ventilator simulator, and we have that patient with ARDS. So if I look at my patient, the compliance is still 25 centimeters of water. And what we're doing is we say they're out of their acute phase, their compliance gets a lot better. I'm just going to increase the compliance setting on the simulator to 50, like we did with the mathematical model. And based on prediction models, we said that that tidal volume is going to be close to 900 cc's. I'm going to hit this monitoring button, and we can see our compliance is 50 now, milliliters. Same pressure control setting of 18. My max obtainable tidal volume should be approximately 900 cc's, and we're going to look at my measured values. So it's slowly going up. Like I said before, measured values on ventilators are usually averages of anywhere from four to five breaths. And you can see we're getting increased tidal volumes now. 
And I'm just going to give it a few more breaths here to see if we can get that max tidal volume of 900, just like the mathematical model. But I said there are variables because a patient's different than actual math. The math is based on a one compartment model. However, like I said before, we might not be meeting time constants and everything else. So it looks like uh, we only obtain a tidal volume of 873 milliliters or CTs. However, this is still a large tidal volume. What did we say before? We were trying to target a tidal volume of around 600. Based on that compliance value of 50, we know that if we decrease the pressure control, every centimeter of water we decrease the pressure control, our tidal volume should go down by 50 milliliters or cc's also. So to get to that 600, we're at 873, almost 900. I wanted to decrease that by approximately six centimeters of water. So let's just be, instead of six, let's just take it down by five. So I'm going to decrease my pressure control value setting to 13 centimeters of water. So one, two, three, four, five. Accept that. And let's see what our delivered tidal volume is now. And of course, it's going down. We have a lower pressure control setting, so our tidal volume is going to reflect that. And we're going to target that 600 cc's. So with these videos, what I was trying to demonstrate that we can still use pressure control ventilation, and we can target a safe lung protective tidal volume and easily manipulate the settings, the pressure control settings, to obtain that target tidal volume. The only math we need to know is the patient's compliance. The equation is more effective if you use a static compliance versus a dynamic compliance. And as you can see now, we have a measured tidal volume is 630. Let's turn it down by one more centimeter of water and that should put us close to the range of 600 milliliters what we're targeting. So yes you can use pressure control as a lung protective strategy. A lot of people just think about, I set pressure control, I don't know what the tidal volume is. This is untrue. We can know, predict exactly where it's going to be as long as we're meeting the inspiratory and expiratory time constants of the patient. And as you can see, just like the mathematical model, we're getting into our target range. Another thing is I can set my alarms appropriately, my alarm thresholds. So it's going to alarm the practitioner based on my expiratory minute ventilation or tidal volumes that I need to come in and reassess my patient. If my tidal volume gets too large or gets too small that I need to assess my patient and come and titrate my settings to get the tidal volume